What's up everybody? It's Justin with s &K Greenhouse. Well, actually I'm standing in front of my 1937 farmhouse that I have been renovating now for the last eight years. And I'm finally to the part I've been wanting to do, the landscape. And I'm gonna use my house as an example to teach you how to landscape your house in probably a three-part series. All right, so the first thing I've done is I got with my buddy Chris, who's a landscaper. And we, we got about two or three dump truck loads of topsoil. We had it brought in. <laughs> and then he started creating my beds, building them up, you know, about six or eight inches. Here in zone seven in the south, we have a lot of clay and the topsoil that was brought in really helps with drainage. Now, if you're landscaping your home and you have uh, old existing beds, then you don't really have to worry about this part. But let's say you have a new construction home or maybe you've never landscaped your home before and you're starting from scratch. The first thing we got to do is determine the shape of your beds. A mistake a lot of people make is not making their beds deep enough you know they want to use a lot of plants but these plants here are going to grow in in five years time they're going to be you know three and four foot tall and wide and you're not going to have enough space so at least give your beds maybe eight feet of width and when you're determining the shape of the beds and the contour think about what specimen plants you want to use a specimen plant is like a focal point tree or shrub that uh, is really going to stand out amongst the foundational plants. The foundational plants are there to accent your focal point plants, just like this Japanese umbrella pine. Right here on the corner, we have another specimen. This is a weeping blue cedar. And you can see I've allotted a good bit of space for this thing to grow. So when you're determining the shape of your beds, think about where your specimens are gonna go. And then think about the contour of your house. So right here, we have a nice big wide bed because we have a huge corner here of the house. And as it curves around, you can see it gets much wider right here. And this is to really give space for this tree to grow and to have room for some accent shrubs in front. And then you can see how it just kind of curves back into the steps. Right here, we have another specimen this is going to grow up tall and kind of hide our uh, power box here. This is a forever goldie. And you can see I've made these beds nice and wide so that I can fit some other shrubs in front of it. And then coming off the steps on this side, we have a corner. And that's why we came off the, the sidewalk here, the pad here, and we're making it nice and wide. I'm actually going to have to make this a little bit wider just to fit these weeping boxwoods in front of this forever goldie. Now, when deciding where to place your specimen plants, think about the blank spaces on your, on your house, basically. So like right to the left of this window, we have a big open space. This is gonna grow up and kind of soften that up. Also, as I mentioned before, we have this power box I'm trying to hide. So this Forever Goldie is gonna fill out and kind of fill in this white space here. And I haven't decided what I'm gonna put back here. I think it's gonna be a, maybe a red dragon Japanese maple just to kind of add that different type of texture and color. But this space just warrants a big specimen, but you gotta be careful not to cover up your windows. Now, I'm not using a landscape architect here. Sometimes, you know, if you don't have anything uh, like too complicated going on, wow. you can just kind of lay your plants out on the beds as I have done just to kind of see what works. But just a little bit about the foundational plants I chose. I chose uh, the Cerise Charm Laura Pedalum, and I chose uh, the Fire Chief Arborvitae. And these are both evergreens, and they're both going to complement each other because they have two different leaf textures. They're both evergreen, and they're both going to grow up about three or four feet tall. Also notice how I've got them kind of in a zigzag pattern. This will give your your landscape bed depth or dimension. You know, I don't like to just line my plants in a straight line, that's kind of boring. So that's why I've chose to kind of emulate a zigzag pattern. 
but I've also staggered them so that you have the purple, orange, I mean, purple, orange, orange, purple. You kind of see how they kind of play off each other and it really brings the landscape to life. Also up front, you'll see how I have these kind of awkward spaces and I'm using something really low growing to fill in these gaps. This is a festuca or a fescue grass uh, called Buddy Blue and it's going to grow up you know a couple feet tall and wide and it'll be perfect for filling in these little areas in front of the lower pedalum and they're also going to play nicely off each other because again you got different colors and textures and i personally think the more textures and colors you have the better the landscape's going to look also notice how i have my landscape fabric already down this is not a hundred percent necessary you can just put a thick layer of pine needles or mulch and it's going to suppress the weeds. But if you're like me and you just want as little to do <laughs> as possible, you know, I'm going for low maintenance here. Landscape fabric is a good way to go. And I'm also going to put pine needles or mulch on top of this at the very end, just to kind of dress it up and give it a nice look. All right, so when it comes to planting these shrubs, what I'm going to do is cut a hole in the landscape fabric that's about twice as wide as this root ball because that's how big the hole is going to be twice as wide but i'm going to dig the depth about the same as the root ball and the reason you don't want to dig a really really deep hole especially here in the south is you will create the bathtub effect dig a really really deep hole you plant your plant down and then when it rains or you water it water collects in the bottom of the hole and the roots end up sitting in it and you can cause root rot so here in the south we like to plant even with the ground or even let the top quarter of your root ball actually stick up out of the ground all right so it's the middle of october it's prime planting time for trees and shrubs here in the south zone seven so there's nothing really left to do but let's get after it So I was digging my first hole and I see a really good indicator here. Check out this guy. An earthworm. And if you're seeing earthworms in your soil, that is such a good sign. That means the soil is nice and fertile and things are gonna go really good there. cedar here is a little bit root bound it's been in the pot a little too long so what I'm doing is combing the roots to keep it from winding up this will help the roots grow into the ground instead of circling ultimately killing the plant <music> Can't forget the Biotone starter plant food. This will really give the shrubs a jump start. All right guys, I'm at the front of my house. I was about to plant those weeping boxwoods and I decided that the Blue Star Junipers really just complement the Forever Goldie a little more with that blue uh, color they have year round. I think against that gold, it's gonna provide really great contrast. Also, the blue stars are only going to get about a foot tall and two foot wide, so it's definitely not going to overtake the space. Over here, though, it looks like I didn't make my beds quite wide enough to accommodate the blue stars, so I've got some work to do uh, with extending these beds out.
All right, so I extended the beds. Luckily, I had enough soil from the holes I was digging earlier to kind of go ahead and extend it. Now I'm going to plant my blue stars, and then I think all that's left to do is maybe put down some pine needles. All right, so luckily I did have some extra landscape fabric to lay down, so I've extended this bed. I've got my blue star junipers laid out. I just planted the three over here around this Forever Goldie, so it'll I'll have symmetry on each side. Let's go ahead and get these planted and knocked out. Alright guys, I got the blue star junipers in on both sides. I've got a little gap right here between the umbrella pine and the blue star. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. I'm not going to force any plant there. We're just going to have to think about it, see what works. And of course I got all my crimson, I mean my Cerise Charm Laura Petalum and Fire Chief in. Again, I'm going to put a maple in the back there whenever I get the right one. And then I got my weeping blue cedar on the corner there. So now there's nothing left to do for now, but put the pine needles down and then I'll show you the after. All right guys, as you can see, pine needles make quite the difference. I didn't have to use pine needles. I could have used mulch, I could have used rock or some other type of soil covering, anything just to cover up that black landscape fabric. I am quite happy with the way this turned out. I really love um, how the plants are just popping now that I, the pine needles are put down. The fire chiefs against the pine needles, it kind of blends in, but I think once the fire chiefs get some size on them, uh, it'll, they'll show up a lot better, but they still contrast well with the lower petal. And of course, I've got the blue festuca grass uh, up in the front there. And moving right along, you can see I decided to go ahead and continue the pattern of the lower petalum and fire chief on around the umbrella pine. So that lower petalum there is what I kind of used to fill in the gap along with this fire chief up front. And it just flows right into the blue star junipers that go around the forever goldie. And of course, I've got the blue star junipers and the forever goldie to match on this side. All right guys, I know this was a long one, so thank you so much for hanging in there. This concludes part one. Be on the lookout for part two where I'm landscaping this side of the house, which is the shady side. I'm really excited to show you the plants I picked out for that. And if you hadn't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you'll get updated every time we release a new video. And until next time, become a plant person.